Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Today I have another tag video for you. Finally, I'm still not up to date with my tags and this is a relatively new one. The Booktuber Booker Book Tag created by David over at The Poptimist. Um, I leave his um, original tag down below and David explained in his video that he didn't really gel with the, the list of this year's book prizes, the Booker, the National Book Award. So he decided to make his own booktube booker tag in which we decide in the end which book will win this tag prize, I guess. So he's going to keep uh, tabs on um, videos and you can participate even if you are not filming. I will leave a link to the, uh, the Google uh, whatever document down below so you can fill in um, and uh, yeah let's get started with the best books of the year oh and I forgot to mention that even though uh, if you want to do this this tag uh, either on a video or if you want to participate in the poll you can of course pick any book you like for the for the questions but preferably pick a book published this year so that we really have a this year's tag winner and the first uh, question or the first prompt is the best fiction novel uh, fiction novel the best fiction book of the year and true to form I immediately fuck up David's statistics because I couldn't make up my mind and I picked two and the first one is Leni Zuma's book Red Clocks which was published in February Leni Zuma's is an American author I haven't read her before but she had written uh, published uh, previous books and Red Clocks is a dystopian novel set in the near future in the US uh, where uh, abortion is once again illegal, maybe not that far into the future if you look at the Supreme Court and the new judge. But anyway, um, and um, the, the right to adopt is curtailed, especially for single women. And the book follows the story of five women, um, a, for instance, a biographer, who wants to adopt but she's a single mother and she's has difficulty getting approved a young girl who is um, you know falling in love and then getting pregnant and doesn't know what to do because she can't get an abortion um, in in the US uh, um, a housewife and mother struggling in her marriage um, uh, a doctor or at least homeopathic doctor living in the woods and you know curing women with uh, herbs and all these stories are interconnected you will find that out in the end how they are connected with each other and I, I love the writing but I also love the stories and the characters and even though um, it the book is spread over five characters you really get to know these women and their choices and their problems and their difficulties um, the dystopian setting uh, is fine, but the book is much more about certain life choices that you as a woman can face, whether it's in a dystopian setting or not. So I really, really loved this book. And the second one, you're probably not surprised, is of course Miriam Taves' book, Women Talking, which was just published in August. Miriam Taves is a Canadian writer and I loved her previous book, All My Puny Sorrows. And this one I read together with Sean uh, uh, as a buddy read in August and we both loved it. Uh, Miriam Taves has a Mennonite background and a lot of her books deal with Mennonite religion. And this book, Women Talking, is based on true events. Uh, a, a Mennonite uh, community somewhere in South America, uh, the women reported uh, that they had, you know, waking up in the morning and they, they felt sore and strange thing happening in the night and it turned out that they had been raped over months and months and months by eight members of the group. Um, uh, that is the premise of Miriam Tave's book um, and then she takes eight women from the community uh, who gather secretly um, uh, and in order to discuss what to do. And a man who is uh, also sort of an outsider in the group, August, he is the one to take minutes of these talks because the women can't write. 
Uh, I loved uh, the setting. I loved the, the the voices of the women were really, really strong. Each of them, you could really distinguish the, the different voices, all kinds of generations um, uh, talking in, in that setting. So I, I just, sorry, David, but I couldn't make up my mind. So I have to. And the second category is nonfiction. So your favorite nonfiction work of the year. That was uh, not that easy for me because I read quite some nonfiction, but most of it was backlist. Uh, but I have a couple and I f published this year. And from those, I think the best one I read was Wendy Mitchell's memoir, Somebody I Used to Know, which came out in June. Uh, Wendy Mitchell, I talked about this book at, at great length previously. You might remember uh, Wendy Mitchell worked for the National Health uh, Service in, in Britain. And when she was 58, she was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Um, and this book chronicles um, her life from the moment she was diagnosed until the present time or until the time the, the book w was finished, so end of 2017. And I thought it was um, a, a, a very informative memoir, uh, especially because uh, Wendy Mitchell focuses on not on the things she can't do anymore with losing her memory and, you know, losing capabilities, uh, but what she can do and how society can help people uh, with Alzheimer's or other forms of de dementia, whether it's early onset or not, in order to stay um, uh, independent. And she also talks about, uh, you know, certain physical uh, uh, problems that uh, that one encounters when you have this disease, uh, walking, uh, you know, your eyesight. So I thought it was a, a fantastic combination of an informative book, but also a very heart-wrenching memoir of somebody losing her mind. Wendy Mitchell, somebody I used to know. The next category is a favorite or best debut novel of the year. And for this one, I picked a book that got some buzz in the beginning when it was published in June, but somehow didn't get the quite the attention I think that it deserved. And that's Peng Shepard's book, uh, The Book of M. Uh, it was published in June. Um, Peng Shepard is an American uh, author and The Book of M is also a dystopian setting um, where uh, people starting in India um, with one man losing his shadow and then more people lose their shadows and that's not all of it because people who lose their shadow also lose their memories. It's as if your memories are captured in your shadow. Um, that was, I thought, a very interesting premise. Uh, the writing was really strong and the, then the book follows uh, um, a variety of characters dealing with this problem, quote-unquote problem, uh, centering around a couple, uh, Ori and his wife Max, um, who flee this epidemic and live in the woods and then Max uh, loses her shadow and that means she will lose her memory as well and she flees because she doesn't want to uh, put Ori at risk. Ori, of course, tries to find her and then we have this road trip uh, kind of uh, book where we follow um, Ori looking for his wife uh, and the people he encounters and we also follow Max on her way uh, to some refuge where people without memory are supposedly cured. I thought, uh, like I said, not only the premise was very strong but the development of the story and the various characters and how they deal with this disease I thought was very well thought through. It was also suspenseful uh, and fast-paced and as a debut, I thought it was an absolute success. The next category is um, favorite either poetry collection or short story collection, or I guess both. And I have to skip on both because I didn't read any uh, 2018 poetry collection or short story collection. Uh, next category is best translated fiction. Uh, that was also quite difficult for me because, uh, first of all, I shamefully admit that I didn't read nearly enough translated fiction. And second of all, the most of it that I read 
uh, were older books. Uh, and I mean, not older uh, originally, but published in translation really years ago. Um, there was one book, uh, though, that was published this year, uh, and that was um, Nora Ekstena's book, Soviet Milk, published from the, uh, uh, translated from the Latvian. I didn't love it, uh, but I, I read this also together um, as a buddy read with Sean from Sean the Book Maniac, and I think he hated the book. I, I didn't, uh, uh, I mean, I didn't hate it, obviously. Um, I didn't love it, but I also think that that was not so much because it was a really bad book or anything, but it was just not my taste. So I wanted to put up this book anyway. Um, Soviet Milk is um, uh, set in Latvia uh, and follows the story of three generations of women, a grandmother, a mother and a daughter, uh, all unnamed, uh, from the end of the Second World War until just about when the Soviet rule ends, so in 1989. Um, I thought a lot of the atmosphere in the book was really strong. You got a really good sense of the lives of these women. I just couldn't really um, deal with the, the metaphors. I thought they were too heavy-handed, uh, too uh, much in your face. But like I said, that's probably a matter of the subjective taste. So I still think... Uh, that this is a good book. Sorry, Sean, I know you hated it, but I, I didn't think it, it was a bad book. Category seven. Up next is the best book cover. Um, and that's for me, um, The Hoarder, the UK cover. Uh, I don't, don't like the American cover and the book is not called The Hoarder, but Mr. Flood's Last Resort for whatever reason. But I love this um, UK cover of Jess, Jess Kidd's novel. And besides, I really love the book. So it gave me the opportunity to at least show you the book and talk briefly about it. Um, the book follows Maud Brennan, who is a caregiver, and she has to take care of Mr. Flood, who is a hoarder hence the title, um, and uh, Maud is tasked to clean up his house. And then there is um, a, a crime element and a suspense element, and uh, there are weird, uh, otherworldly uh, things going on. Uh, and it's the book is mainly also really, really funny. I love the writing, I love the story, and I love the cover. The next category is favorite author. Uh, and David specified that in his video that, of course, you can pick whatever author you want. And if Ursula Le Guin is your favorite author, you talk about Ursula Le Guin. But he meant to say author also considering, you know, a social media presence, um, articles. So not only the work, but the author uh, more as a, yeah, as a person and his or her presence. And so I... Uh, chose uh, a translator, and that is Susan uh, Banofsky. She translates from the German into English. Uh, she translated Jenny uh, Erpenbeck, for instance, but also Yoko Tawada, uh, the Japanese uh, writer who lives in Berlin and writes also in German. Um, I, I love her website uh, or her blog. I will leave links to it down below. I follow her on Twitter, and she talks about translation and what it means to translate. That's very interesting, but she also has a, a presence in, in public debate. So Susan Banofsky is my pick for the best author. And the next uh, category we're almost through is uh, your favorite booktube video. And even though I if you look at which videos I like, I, I like a lot of videos, uh, whether it's hauls or discussions or reviews or um, uh, uh, wrap-ups. Um, I, I love BookTube. But there was one video that, that stood out for me, and not so much the video itself, but what it represented. And that was a video by Sean over at uh, Sean the Book Maniac, um, the Eric Carl Anderson 40th birthday tag. Uh, Eric is... Of course, The Lonesome Reader, you know him, you subscribe to him. He's not only a booktuber, but also a blogger. And uh, beginning of September, he turned 40. And Sean did a tag for this occasion, a secret tag. Um, and he asked people to participate. And then on Eric's birthday, people um, published their answers to the tag. 
And for me, this tag, this idea, Sean's idea to celebrate another BookTuber's 40th birthday is represents the heart of BookTube, that it's a community um, that we, you know, not only watch each, other, each other's videos, but that we know each other, that we um, care for each other in a, yeah, in, in that way. And I thought it was incredibly sweet and I think Eric loved it. Uh, so I, I chose this video as my favorite BookTube video of the year. And category 10 is uh, a new or at least new to you booktuber um, that you want to, you know, a, a favorite. Um, and for that one, I chose Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read. Um, she's a UK booktuber. At least that's what I gather from her accent. Um, and she started about her channel about four months ago. And I think she's fantastic. She is really quirky and f funny. Um, and she has her very own take on wrap ups and books. Um, and I think she deserves many more subscribers than she has. So go check her out. Charlotte Tired Mama tries to read. So these were the categories and the only thing left to do is to, to tag people. And I really honestly want to tag everybody who didn't, uh, who hadn't done the tag so far, because I think it's a fantastic idea um, uh, David proposed here and we should all participate. So either do a video if you are a booktuber, I tag you or uh, go to the, the Google form and fill in uh, your favorite books so that we, at the end of the year, have our own BookTube tag price. So this was it for the uh, BookTuber Booker Book tag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Talk to me down in the comments as always, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.